Hello, everyone. Welcome to the first mindfulness session for the conference. My name is Kim Xiao. I'm so feeling so pleased and privileged to be here. Firstly, just to give you a heads up that sometimes my internet can be a little bit intermittent. So if there's any disruption as a result of the internet, do please bear with us. I'd like to think, though, that um, it shouldn't happen and um, that this should not detract from your mindful experience of being here now. I want to first acknowledge that I'm delivering um, this session from the land of the Ghana people in Adelaide and that I recognize the importance of their connection to land, water, culture and community and that I respect their elders past, present and emerging. Now, in terms of the structure of this session, I would like to first take about 10 minutes to get us all on the same page on what mindfulness is. I'm sure most of you here would know what it is, but I still think it's useful um, to get us all on the same page. Um, I also think that it's good to bust some myths for some of you who think that you don't know how to practice mindfulness or you don't do it well. Um, and then I would also really like to share some research on the benefits of mindfulness. So for some of you, this might be old news. And if it is, well, you know, sit back, pretend you're five years old again and you're listening to your favorite bedtime story. Just relax. Um, and then after that, I will guide you through a mindfulness practice. I do want to emphasize that um, please stay safe. So at any point during the guided mindfulness practice, if you feel uncomfortable, there are strong emotions arising for you, do please resource yourself. And what I mean by that is if you have your eyes closed, then do open your eyes and take in your surroundings and um, take in your surroundings, sorry, I was just checking on my internet. Um, and also, um, if you need to, stand up, go and get yourself a drink, etc. I would um, like to think that this won't happen because the guided practice really, I've... Um, I guess, design it to just help you feel more centered and, and spacious and hopefully even walking away feeling a little bit more uplifted. So let's get on the same page as to what is mindfulness. So I'm using John Kabat-Zinn's um, definition, which I'm sure many of you here are very familiar with, which is that mindfulness is awareness cultivated by paying attention in a sustained and particular way on purpose in the present moment and non-judgmentally. So when you look at that definition, it really seems quite simple, isn't it? It's really about cultivating our awareness, paying attention to what's going on right here, right now, and not judging whether it's good or bad. So it seems simple but obviously it's not easy to practice and this is where I feel like um, busting some myths might be helpful. So because of the fact that we are so conditioned to um, for our mind to wander all the time it has a tendency to to think about what's just happened or or you know worrying about the future it's good to have an anchor to anchor our mind to a certain uh, object of focus so that we can pay attention to what's going on right here right now and so typically breaths are used otherwise it could be our five senses and um, you know sight listening to sounds smelling touch um, and of course we can also anchor our attention to sensations we feel in our body so when you think about that, then really we can practice mindfulness anywhere, anytime. And, um, you know, using our five senses when you're going for a walk, when we're eating, tasting, smelling, looking at the food. Um, and also in terms of movement, whether we're going to the gym, whether we're practicing yoga or Tai Chi or Qigong, these all can be done very mindfully because we're just really paying attention to what's going on right here, right now. So 
I guess the myths or a lot of people have this misconception that they can't practice or they don't know how to practice mindfulness because their mind is busy all the time. And really, that is quite normal. And the aim of mindfulness is really not about getting rid of um, thoughts. It's really about being able to be with what is going on in this present moment. And one um, meditation teacher I know actually says that he likes to define mindfulness as being intimate with this moment right here. And using John Kabat-Zinn's work, he also says that basically the attitude we want to cultivate and embrace during a mindfulness practice are these seven attitudes. First, it is with a beginner's mind. So every moment we bring on that curiosity as if we're sensing our breath for the first time. And it is the first time because it's a new, fresh breath. Um, So the beginner's mind is one attitude. It is that we're not judging. So whatever that is going on in this present moment, we allow it. So we let it be. We accept. We are not striving. So we're not trying to achieve anything certainly not not trying to achieve enlightenment you will get there but the more we strive the the more whatever we're trying to achieve um is elusive and and of course we want to be patient with ourselves and then trust trust that we have the ability to to do this to be present to be mindful Now, in terms of sharing the research, I was very, very surprised when I looked into this that there are now more than 17,000 publications showing positive effects of mindfulness from improving our general well-being to um, reducing depression, anxiety, physical pain, stress, and giving us better self-regulation. So what's happening in our body when we practice mindfulness through starting with grounding and centering is that it activates our parasympathetic nervous system. So what that means is our heart rate slows down, our blood pressure slows down, um, and it also calms down that fight, flight, or freeze uh, response part of our brain, which is the amygdala. And then what it does is it gives a chance for our prefrontal cortex to be activated. So we can regulate our emotions, we can um, make better decisions. And, you know, for, for everyone here who are mental health professionals, the research actually shows that it could improve our therapeutic presence. So in other words, the more mindfulness practices you do, the more compassion, self attunement you'll be cultivating, and also you get a better perspective on suffering whether it's your own suffering or your client's suffering, which meant that you can then build a stronger therapeutic alliance with your client. And there are evidence actually to show that basically patients show better improvements, whether it's a symptoms reduction or rate of change when they're treated with uh, by mental health professionals who meditate versus Um, those who don't meditate. There are just better results from those who meditate. So the other thing I also want to clarify is what is mindfulness and what is meditation? So meditation really is a formal um, form of mind training. So it's deliberate training of attention and awareness. So there's that combination of concentration and awareness that is in play when we practice meditation um, And there are, of course, many forms of meditation from mindfulness meditation, which is what I'll give you an experience um, of. And then loving kindness meditation, which I'm sure many of you would have practiced before, mantra, visualization, etc. Ultimately, the um, the aim of meditation and mindfulness is over time, it gives us the... um, we, We start to become aware of our condition... Um, habits of thinking, our conditioned mind. And we can also start to see, especially through mindfulness meditation, that nothing is permanent. The pain we feel, the emotions we feel, it's not permanent. And 
with regular practice, it does cultivate that acceptance and openness and really increase our self-awareness as well as window of tolerance. So I like what one meditation teacher says that really the practice of mindfulness is you can kind of relate it to as if we are trying to drink water in a cup when we put a table of salt into that cup of water. If you put a table of salt into that cup of water, it's really quite undrinkable because it's very salty. But when we put a table of salt into a big pond, you can still drink the water even though it might taste slightly saltier. So this is what mindfulness really helps us to do. It expands the capacity, the openness of our, our, our mind so that we become large containers for whatever challenges that we, we face. And this is where, you know, it's increasing that window of tolerance. I also like what my uh, teacher, my meditation teacher, Jack Confield says. He says that we have within um, us unlimited capacities for joy, for communion with life and for unshakable freedom. And I think this is really what mindfulness uh, gift to us is the, the, the fact that we regular practice we realize that we are much more spacious than we think we are. We um, are able to make choices. We are able to regulate our emotions. So we have a choice. We have a choice in terms of how we want to feel. And we become much more comfortable in our own skin. We don't judge others. And most of all, we don't judge ourselves because we're much more accepting. So on that note, I invite you to um, meditate, uh, a mindful, do a mindfulness meditation with me. Um, for today, because it's the first section, I'm going to just take you through a grounding practice with your five senses, then going into your breath and then into your body. And I will also then guide you to become aware of your emotions. I thought this might be a good practice, especially um, in relation to this evening's panel of discussion, where you'll be talking about complex uh, case scenario and how you would respond. So becoming comfortable with our emotions, being there and open and accepting of whatever arises is a uh, wonderful way for us to learn to regulate our emotions so that then we're not just reacting to situations but we're responding in a way that is deliberate and as I said before during the meditation if at any time you are feeling some intense emotions do just open your eyes and um, resource yourself so on that note um, please sit in a way that you're comfortable sitting um, <clears throat> and what I invite you first to do is to look around you and maybe look at one particular object and really take it in, like the, what we said about the beginner's mind. It could be even your fingers, your keyboard, whatever that you see in front of you. And seeing it for the first time, what are you noticing about it that perhaps you haven't noticed before? And now I invite you to close your eyes if you're comfortable closing your eyes. Otherwise, uh, bring your gaze down towards the floor. But what I'd like you to do now is to tune in to sounds around you. What can you hear, near or far? And now I invite you to feel, what can you feel? Perhaps it's the clothing on your body. Maybe it's your hands 
placed together your thighs on your chair what can you feel now what can you smell and finally what can you taste And now, what I'd like you to do is bring your awareness to your breath. And for the next few breaths, I invite you to deepen the in-breath and deliberately slow down the out-breath. And as you slow down the out-breath, you could almost imagine that Whatever tension you might be feeling in your body is being released together with that out breath into the earth, into the ether. And now I invite you to just breathe naturally, not changing the rhythm of your breath. But again, with that beginner's mind, what can you notice about your breath? Perhaps just as a start, where are you noticing your breath? And if it's difficult to notice the breath, you can always place your hands on your chest or on your belly. With this embodied presence, invite a sense of calm and ease to grow. See how the breath is breathing itself. The mind wanders, as we said before, that's very normal, just like guiding a puppy to sit, bring your attention back to the breath, to this anchor of being here now. And you might even start to notice that there are other experiences, sounds, sensations, images. Let them rise and fall like waves of the ocean around the breath. Now, I invite you to check in back with the body, starting with the head. 
relax your face, maybe give yourself a little smile. This allows the frown of your face to be ironed out. Maybe let your jaw drop a little to unclench the teeth. So softening the face. Maybe slight tuck of the chin. Placing the tongue at the top of your mouth. And relax your shoulders. Let them roll down towards the spine. And just notice what are the sensations you're feeling around the arms. the middle part of your body, the heart beating perhaps. Perhaps you're noticing the breath breathing into the lungs. You might notice or sense rather the digestive system working. Acknowledging these amazing organs working on their own accord to keep you healthy. And now you bring attention to your pelvic area, to your sit bones, supported by the chair, the back of your thighs. So what feedback are you getting from that part of your body? What sensations are you feeling? We sense our knees, our shins, your ankle, and then your feet. Sense the ground supporting you. As you become more present to your body, I invite you to become mindful of any emotions that call your attention. You can bring the same mindful, loving awareness to them as you have to the breath and the body. When an, emotions, when an emotion arises, let go of attention to the breath, receive the emotion kindly. It can be helpful to name it softly. Could be feeling peaceful, calm, or maybe sad, anxious, bored. So name them softly and then let them go. And as you attend to this emotion, notice carefully where you feel in your body. And also notice that the emotion in your body is a constellation of sensations. How does the emotion respond to kind awareness? Does it change? You are this spacious awareness that can kindly notice the emotions as they come and go. The 
The breath is always there for you to come back to. Allowing whatever that is arising to just be like waves. You are the gentle presence that is spacious and steady, a calm and steady witness. Acknowledging every moment as it arises. But you now to just tune back into the body and the breath. And again, take some deep, long inhale. And some long and slow exhale. And I shall complete the mindfulness meditation with three bells. Thank you everyone i hope that was a, <clears throat> a good practice for you um, my hope and vision is that one day we will all embrace mindfulness practice like we embrace brushing our teeth we wake up in the morning we brush our teeth we all don't think twice about whether we should how much time we have to brush our teeth we just do it because we know brushing our teeth is good for our teeth and there is now enough strong evidence to say if we practice mindfulness, it's good for our mind, it's good for us, it's good for our life. And as mental health professionals, we tend to look after others and not ourselves. Um, and so I ask that if you or encourage you that if you don't have a regular practice, start with little bit, you know, maybe two minutes, three minutes each time so there's this poem here that goes little by little i'll learn to know the treasured wisdom of long ago and one of these days perhaps we'll see that the world will be the better for me and do you not think that this simple plan made him a wise and useful man or woman so on that note, I hope you've enjoyed the session. I just want to mention that I do offer a free online um, meditation session every Wednesday from 7 to 7.30 a.m. in Adelaide time. Um, you can email me. The, my email address is on the slide or you can also look up uh, talks and blogs from me in my website, chitalift.com. I wish you all a wonderful evening. Other than that, thank you for your presence and thank you.